Hey guys, welcome back to my blog. I got an interesting one for you today. It's entitled Royal Bloodlines, Mars, Tom Cruise, Star Wars, and the Black Pope. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to talk fast. President George Bush met with the Pope June 7th of this year. And Dan Brown, the writer of Deception Point and The Da Vinci Code, is also scheduled to meet with the Pope later this month. I find it a very odd occurrence that these two would be meeting with the Pope at rather the same time. If you know anything about Dan Brown's writing, conspiracy all over the place. This man here's name is Leo Zagami. He is a ex-member of the Italian Illuminati, a 33-degree Freemason, and a true insider and high member of the infamous Freemasonic P2 Lodge. He is well aware of the highest ranking Illuminati officials being rooted in the Vatican and knows for a fact that Bush is meeting with the Pope not to advise him, but to be advised. It's an eerie sensation for most people to think of the Vatican being rooted in Luciferian witchcraft. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law being their primary philosophy and motto. But once you blow the dust off your history books and read a little, the connections began to become too difficult to ignore. Let's start with the Vatican itself, shall we? Vatican City is a landlocked sovereign city-state whose territory consists of a walled enclave within the city of Rome. At approximately 108 acres, it is the smallest independent nation in the world. Following the spiral staircase in the main wing of the Vatican Library, I found myself in another wormhole of discovery. I recently watched the film Mission Impossible 3, and there was a scene where Tom Cruise and his team have to break into the Vatican, one of the most secure areas to get into, humanly imaginable. This led me on another cognitive spike relating to Tom Cruise's recent shenanigans concerning the South Park Scientology episode, as well as his crazy rant slandering psychiatry and of course his insanity witnessed on The Oprah Winfrey Show. L. Ron Hubbard, founder of Scientology, was fast friends with a man named Jack Parsons. Jack was an occultist and understudy of Aleister Crowley and proclaimed himself to be the Antichrist of the new millennium. He also designed ballistic rockets for NASA in the shape of pentagrams. Would you look at those pearly whites? And this, of course, is the notorious Oprah Winfrey Show scene that he made. And here you have Popra. I can't make this stuff up, folks. Just Google it. Please notate the bling. As well as Tom Cruise being depicted as the Messiah. And bouncing and bouncing. Okay, now things start to get a little weird. What does Tom Cruise shooting lightning bolts at Oprah Winfrey have to do with Zeus, Mars, the Black Pope, or Star Wars? Well, most logical people would say absolutely nothing. But the fabric of space-time appears to disagree with us on that one. Even if it is a wholly human phenomenon, it's enough to make your brain hurt. The character Raiden in Mortal Kombat, which also has wormhole and Stargate aesthetics throughout its plot, is the god of lightning. An immortal, he thinks in terms of eternity rather than normal human lifespans, and his memories date back to the beginning of time itself. Kratos, the main character in God of War, takes on Ares with the help of Zeus's lightning bolt ability that he gifts you halfway through your progress in the game. In Greek mythology, Ares is the son of Zeus, ruler of the gods, and Hera. Though often incorrectly referred to as the Olympian god of war, he is more accurately the god of savage war, or bloodlust, or slaughter personified. The Romans identified him as Mars, the Roman god of war, whom they had inherited from the Etruscans. 
with Hellenic eras, but among them Mars stood in much higher esteem, and it is also strongly associated with the ram sign. As Michael Tesserion of Teroscos would be too happy to tell you, the color red is an extremely important tie to the royal bloodline of the Illuminati. That's why you always see the Bush family, Queen Elizabeth, Vatican bishops, and televangelists like Pastor John Hagee walking on the red carpet or wearing the blood red tie. It links them to Mars, Aries, and the sign of the ram. It's a powerful connection to the Luciferian god of slaughter, and they rub your face in it in plain view. This guy, John Hagee, really makes me ill. He has an enormous church following and he tells his members that bringing about the apocalypse is a good idea because it will vindicate their faith and bring about the return of the Messiah. Just read some of his book titles. Making the extraterrestrial tie-in, Tom Cruise is known for working with Steven Spielberg who has done a few films about the concept of alien life, such as E.T. They did War of the Worlds together, and it strangely links Tom's Scientology belief system with Hollywood film. Going back to the Vatican and its Masonic checkerboard flooring, I want to quickly mention my friend Jake Kotze's A Brave New World Order blog site, and his research tying together these large spherical orbs at Mecca, the Vatican, and the World Trade Center before the 9-11 Mega Ritual. All right, ready for some more bizarre stuff involving space-time? Samuel Jackson, who was in Snakes on a Plane, was also in Star Wars, and co-starred in Pulp Fiction with another Scientology guru, John Travolta. The Snakes on a Plane poster is a serpent DNA caduceus, with metaphors involving the planes hitting the towers at 9-11. I was just doing a Google image search, and I actually found a picture of Samuel Jackson and John Travolta with their heads photoshopped to look like they were Darth Vader and the Sith Lord from Star Wars. Try and digest all of that if you can. Here you have the Pope Grimace and the Necro Pope doing the Necro Pope dance, Vampire Pope and the Fat Gothic Pubescent Child Pope, and the Pyramid of the Illuminati, of course. Shh. And a little heavy metal for you. It was about that big, sir. All these guys look alike to me, I swear. And this is evil Bilbo Baggins' face from Lord of the Rings. See my Agartha Hollow Earth video for more Middle Earth creatures running amok. This is kind of a strange theory concerning Barbara Bush being related to Crowley. That would mean that President Bush was Crowley's grandson, and the implications of that are pretty extraordinary. And these hats, by the way, the one that Popra's wearing right there, are not Christian. They are Egyptian. And there's Ares with a similar hat. And, of course, Crowley. Or you could say Barbara Bush. And this one blew my mind. It's actually the Pope with a Raiden hat. I still can't believe that one. I implore all my listeners to go back over this blog and really pay attention to the usage of the color red and how important it is to this bloodline. They compare themselves to Ares, the god of war, the god of slaughter, and Mars and the sign of the ram. And also research the older popes in the medieval periods because there are some very sinister ones. I'm not really sure how Mel Gibson got in there. There's those pearly whites again. He wants you for Scientology. Or some bizarre fivesome with Xenu and Hubbard. And as a treat, I think we deserve it for sitting through this whole thing. We're going to have to see the Oprah Winfrey electrocution video once more as we close. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, everybody. And I'll see you real soon with new bizarre space-time phenomena.